everybody's a critic, right? I mean, that's kind of true. Everybody is a critic. But since I'm playing the part of a movie critic, I thought it would be fun to kind of dive into what I think works for the channel, why I approach movie criticism the way I do, and why it's not necessarily the right way to do it. But it's one that works for me. All right, let's jump in. If you're new here, I would love if you commented below and said, hey, Adam, I'm new. I, I found you via YouTube search or recommendation or whatever. And maybe think about sticking around because you appreciate the honesty, the candidness of it all. Or, or, or not. I don't know. Either way, it's up to you. It's your life. If you're not new here and you're a subscriber, I already love you. You know I do. The reason I'm talking about this today is this has happened a couple times in the past, but recently on Dune 2. Someone put a comment down saying, hey, Adam, you're a good critic, but you really lose credibility when you don't know the names of the villains, when you don't know the names of this tribe or this planet or whatever. It makes you look ignorant, and I think you're doing it willfully because it's not hard to Google search the name, go on IMDb, do a little deep dive or even just a surface dive, really, which I don't recommend. That can hurt. And to their credit, they're not wrong. It is very easy to research some of this stuff, to find a director, the names of the actors, the names of the characters, and blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, this is my channel, and I run things the way I do because I like it this way. And no, not because it's willfully ignorant, but because I always approach this from the standpoint of a guy going to a movie and then talking to his buddies about it afterwards. And to say I'm not doing any research or putting in any work is incredibly disingenuous and it's borderline insulting. Because a lot of work goes into this. And I'm not going to get into that. Who cares? Yeah, we know. YouTube's hard. Making movies are hard. Everything's tough. Everything's hard in this world if you're doing a good job at it. And I think I am at the end of the day. But to his point, no. I did a Dune 2 review. I can't remember the name of the... Uh, I, I still don't honestly remember. <laughs> I could look it up. The, guy, the guys that Dave Bautista is with. I've seen Dune 1 twice now. And I saw Dune 2. And I, I just forget. I forget the names of some of these guys. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Some people are going to fixate on that. And they're going to say that I'm doing a disservice or I'm being disrespectful. The Harkonnens. I think it's the Harkonnens. We're going to move. We're going to keep going. But that's not the point. The point is, I go to the movie, I enjoy it, I hate it, I go out of the movie, I fire this up, I pull up IMDb to get a little bit of info, and then I just talk to you. And if I'm having to stop every five minutes or every ten seconds to look up the name of an actor, how to pronounce it, the director, what they've worked on, all that stuff, it's so boring and basic to me. You can do that yourself. Or you can go to the countless other YouTube critics out there or critics on other outlets and get that information from someone that's got a channel that's now called Adam Does Movies. The name itself should already imply that there's going to be a lack of professionalism here. It's going to be a bit more low-key, a little bit more candid, a little bit more sit on the couch chatting with your buddies. And I think there's room for that in the industry. Now... I became Rotten Tomatoes certified a year or so back. Kind of a surprise to me, as a matter of fact. I mean, I applied. You can apply once a year. I applied one time and I got in based on the fact that I've reviewed a lot of movies and I have a unique take, I think, or an interesting viewpoint on how to approach it. So they let me in the door. When I put a review out there, which is not for every movie, mind you, there's a lot of them I just do not. And it's because... I don't like the binary nature of Rotten Tomatoes, a one or a zero. I don't think things are either amazing or terrible. Most stuff falls somewhere in the middle and kind of balances. Kung Fu Panda 4, for instance, I did not like. I thought it was lazy. I thought it was uh, just a shell of its former self. But I also thought, you know what? It's a kid's movie. It does the job. Parents will probably be entertained by its, you know, silly antics and fart jokes and all that crap that I don't like. And so why put a review, like, negatively on it? These are the things that I think about. I really do take time and, and, and kind of, like, fight with myself over whether or not I should put a review out there or not. Unless the movie really hits me negatively, where I'm like, you know what, I feel like I wasted my money and time on this. Screw this movie. I'm putting a negative review out or a positive review if I loved it. I, I, I sometimes just avoid it altogether. And who cares? You know, who, who cares? It's just a score on Rotten Tomatoes. It's, it's really not the end of the world. Here, though, my approach is just to be candid with you, come out of the movie theater, 
talk about the film and then move on, maybe do a spoiler review if I have enough to say about it. I was going to do a Dune 2 spoiler review, but it did fall back into that whole, okay, I'm going to have to actually put some time and research into the names of these characters, the planets, and that's going to put me on a bad flow. I'm going to be constantly stopping, looking at this stuff, and that's just not fun to me, and I think it would come through in the commentary. This is not my full-time job. This is a passion, project, hobby, second job. And so with that in mind, I don't want it to feel like a lot of work. I want it to still be the thing I loved doing. Because my main job, while it pays the bills and I love the people I work for, it's not exciting. Designing emails and websites and coding... I've been doing it a very long time and there's just not that excitement level there. I'm, I'm, I'm at a place at work where it's just very formulaic and kind of conveyor belt almost at times. So here's where I get to have fun and play and give my voice out there. But when people come in the comments and they say, Adam, you should know this stuff. You should be doing it this way. You shouldn't even be able to talk about this film. Like, for instance, The Blackening. I'm a white guy, so I shouldn't even be able to talk about that movie according to some of the audience. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to go ahead and say whatever I want. You can chalk it up to ignorance. You can chalk it up to ego. You can chalk it up to whatever you want. I paid money to go to the movie. I'm going to tell you what I thought about the movie. That's it. Case closed. And if you don't want to listen to that, that's fine. I did a, uh, a trailer reaction to Wicked. I thought it looked pretty bad. And there was a lot of comments on there saying, how dare you? You don't know the material. You don't know that it's based on a play. I mean, I did know that. I, I knew it was based on a Broadway musical. I'm not sure why people said that. I, I admitted that in the video. But no, I didn't know the ins and outs. Um, I knew it was a musical. And so I guess I can't, I can't say whether or not I think a movie looks good based on the trailer. What? Should I have not have been able to shit all over cats? Because that was based on a Broadway. Should I not be able to speak to books? That are made into movies because I may not have read that book. These are all things that movies are supposed to accomplish. They're supposed to be both companion pieces at times, but also they have to absolutely stand on their own if they're going to try to draw in a new crowd, which they need to do at the end of the day. So yes, a channel called Adam Does Movies is not going to be your number one stop shop for learning everything you need to know about the ins and outs of movie making, who's in the movie and all that stuff. I consider it a just fun, light channel that reviews mostly mainstream big movies with the occasional Netflix crap or Peacock thing that comes out just to kind of have a little bit of variety. But at the end of it all, I, I just hope that it comes off sincere and honest and you get a laugh or two out of the video and then I've done my job and that's really it. I stopped there. And do I get it wrong? Absolutely I get it wrong. And no, I don't get it wrong from a standpoint of my opinion. I mean, it's my opinion. I can't get, I can't get that wrong. It can be against the popular viewpoint though. I didn't like Avatar 2 at all. I thought it sucked. That's got very positive reviews. People liked it, it seemed. I did not like Barbarian. I thought it sucked. People really love that movie. It's got very high percentage points on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. A lot of people had it in their top 10s a couple years ago. I didn't really like Godzilla Minus One. I heard plenty on that. I heard plenty on that. And the funny thing is, a movie like Godzilla Minus One, I was just so confident in how much I didn't enjoy it that when I put out my review, I imagined everybody was going to greet me with open arms. We'd be like, yes, Adam, we, we, we agree with you. You're so right on this. And also keep in mind, there's the big fiasco with Rotten Tomatoes, how I ruined its 100%. It had nine reviews at the time. So even with 100%, it's not like that was a major number of people loving the film. I didn't think anything of it. I just put out my review, assuming there might be a little pushback. But for the most part, it's going to be like, yep, I agree. It, it wasn't great. Because I'm not speaking to Godzilla fans. I'm not speaking to Wicked fans. I'm not speaking to Adam Sandler fans. I'm speaking to movie goers. People that just go to a lot of different movies. They're not part of a fandom. They're not part of a club. They don't identify as a My Little Pony or whatever. They're just going to movies. And if the movie's not speaking to them, if it's not reaching them, then I come in and, and I have a voice. And I throw it out there. That's where I come in. To ruin that Rotten Tomato score. <laughs> A bunch of people over the years have also given me a hard time for not having a review score. Where's the 1 through 10? Where's the A through F? Where's the S tier or the different rankings? Or I need some way to gauge where you're at. 
And the reason I don't have one is, is really twofold. Number one, I don't think I would agree with the review score I gave any movie two years down the road from now. The number would be so in flux over the years. A movie I loved 10 years ago, I might watch tomorrow and be like, ugh, that's not near as good as I remember because things change over time. And they, yes, it absolutely matters with the passing of time because you won't believe how many people, this is the second part of that two folder, will use that score against you down the road. It will discredit you. It'll be the thing you're known as. This guy gave Godzilla minus one a six out of 10 or a five out of 10, but then he gave Migration by Illumination a seven or eight out of 10? Are you serious right now? This guy's a shill, he's a hack. Movies should be graded on a curve. Movies should be graded based on genre and audience they're going after. Giving a movie like The Despicable Me an 8 or 9 out of 10, and then turning around and giving a movie like John Wick Chapter 4 a 7 or 8 out of 10, those are not comparable things. John Wick's going after a different audience The Despicable Me. Sure, there's going to be overlap. The boys come out for Despicable Me. I know that. The boys are there. Day one seating, and then they're there for John Wick. But there's going to be younger audiences going to Despicable Me. Some of them will carry over to John Wick as well. Of course. <laughs> but it's a different audience. And so therefore the score is going to be different. But I see so many times when people will say IGN or this big outlet gave this game this and this game that. And maybe IGN is not the best comparison. But I think you know what I'm saying it's often weaponized and used against you and you can really kind of discredit yourself when you do that. I have seen critics in the past give out scores and then they're haunted by that score and then they even give a second review pushing that score down a little bit because of the pushback. It's at the end of the day so I, I think kind of arbitrary to me. Now I'm not opposed to some sort of a scaling system. Maybe it's just I would recommend this or I don't recommend this or watch it at home, stream it. But even then, I just, eh, it, it just seems kind of unnecessary. Maybe just listen to what I say and go from there. That's really what it, what it kind of boils down to. Listen to the pros and cons I'm putting out there and then you can decide for yourself. This actually sounds like something I would like. He just has a problem with it. I'm gonna check it out. I believe he's being honest, but I don't agree with what he's saying. I'm gonna check it out. Or yeah, he sounds spot on. This is what I was worried about. I'm gonna avoid this. We're, we're spending money. Unless it's a streaming service, but even then you're still spending money. You know, it's a monthly service fee and your, your time is money. Time is valuable. And I think it's the job of a critic to just inform people about what they can expect. Hey, you know the trailer for that film? It actually only has that character in it for about a minute. So don't be fooled by what's going on with that trailer. Or hey, this movie says it's the scariest movie of the year or of all time. Yeah, it's actually tame as shit. And it's for little babies. You're gonna want to avoid that one. Or hey, just to give you a little heads up, this movie's three and a half hours long and there's typically 20 minutes of trailers and it might take you a half hour to drive there. So plan on half of your day being spent at the theater and then decide if that's worth it. That to me is far more valuable than just saying this movie's an A or this movie's an F. Just listen to the dialogue being presented and then you can kind of go from there. But also, like, I'm just one guy giving you my thoughts. I don't really want you to hold on to those review scores. I want you to have your own review score. Me saying this movie's an A or, oh, Adam gave out eight A's last year. You know, what an asshole. <laughs> Only eight. That's not the point of the channel. It's just to talk movies, have a good time, hear what you have to say. People should know this by now since everybody has access to a computer, a smartphone. They can upload videos within seconds. Everything is very edited. Everything is very manicured. So in the movie critic space, you'll notice that critics will make mistakes. I've done it a million times over, mispronouncing names, getting dates wrong, just borderline being straight up wrong about something altogether. Typically, I catch that in post when I'm editing and I can cut that line out and then I can move the timeline around, make it sound like I know what the hell I'm talking about. Lives are harder. Lives are where you really see me trip up. I stumble on words. I say words that don't even make sense. I pronounce words wrong. This is where you really get to see a, a much more true palette of the individual and i think they're fun they're 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 scary but they're fun there's going to be youtube critics out there that portray themselves as very i won't say elite but very like very knowledgeable 
very professional. They, they speak eloquently. They, they know the dates, the names, the places of all these characters. They're doing this to provide an image of someone that's very intelligent about movies, very knowledgeable, possibly even more so than you are. So then you look at that person, you say, okay, this is a guy, this is a woman I want to listen to. This is someone I need to listen to because they know more about the industry. I have to follow and listen and support. And that's a brand that's trusted because they have experience. They take the time to research this stuff and they say it in such a meaningful, valuable way. And that's not this channel. <laughs> like, I watch a lot of movies. I watch a lot of behind the scenes. I have done a bunch of research, but I'm not going to present myself as this squeaky clean, top tier, brilliant order that doesn't make a mistake. No, that's, that's not happening. Again, this is a light show, it's a light channel, and that's the image I want to give off. Hopefully that clears some things up and you know where I'm coming from now, you might already have. But if you're new here and you thought, Adam seems fine, but he's not that knowledgeable on this or that, or he could have put more research in, it's very much by design. It's very much intentional because I want to talk to you like a friend. I don't want to talk down to you. I don't want to educate you in that sense. You'll get some learning out of this, I would imagine, just by me telling you about the film about the runtime, about some of the actors, the storyline, but I'm not going to deep dive and I'm not going to pretend I know more than I do. All right, there you go. Those are my, uh, that's my take. That's how I approach the channel. Is it the right way? <laughs> Who the fuck knows? Channel's growing. It seems to be doing all right. And uh, I'm having a good time with it. I love seeing all the new subscribers coming in. The support is awesome. If you want to become a supporter, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. It's seriously becoming a fantastic value over there. I'm putting in some awesome stuff. I have two vlogs coming out. I got two more on the way. And then I do even more if you support at a higher tier than that. So yeah, there's a lot of great offerings over there. Plus, you're supporting a one-man operation, and I appreciate it. Please think about subscribing, like this video, share it, comment, all that stuff. And hopefully, I see you next time. Take care.